Okay, so welcome to this next video in which we are discussing acetylcholinesterase enzymes and acetylcholinesterase enzyme inhibitors. Right, okay, so we've now discussed the way that acetylcholinesterase enzymes are assembled into these larger structures. And these larger structures are now going to be attached to structure within the synaptic cleft. Now, let me ask you a question. Do you think that the synaptic cleft has nothing in it? Do you think that it is just merely a space between these two interfacing membranes? Well, the answer is no. So this is part of maturing in biology. You have to realise that these simple pictures you were taught long ago uh, aren't quite correct. Instead, this synaptic cleft here is absolutely filled with extracellular proteins which are holding these two cell membranes together. So basically, if I draw this more, uh, more realistically, you have a huge number of intertwining proteins everywhere, all over here, and it makes it look much more messy. And you have proteins that are going to connect up to proteins within the cell membrane of the presynaptic cell, okay? So you have fibers and fibers and fibers everywhere. Now, these are not just proteins. Some of them will be uh, sugar um, polymers as well. So you'll have things known as uh, proteogl uh, sorry, heparin sulfate proteoglycans. So let me now draw this a little bit more carefully down here. So basically, this meshwork of fibers here, some of which are protein fibers, some of which are sugar fibers, um, this is known as the basement membrane of the neuromuscular junction. So you have a mesh of fibers in this synaptic cleft, okay? Now, a lot of them are collagen fibers. So let me draw lots of collagen fibers. Now, I'll color in the collagen fibers in blue. So here we have some collagen fibers. In fact, I might just show this picture where we're actually looking down. So imagine we now are sitting in this axon terminal and we're looking down at the uh, basement membrane, as it's called here. So this is the basement membrane of the neuromuscular junction. So I will draw the basement membrane as though we're looking at it from above, because then I can draw it a little bit more clearly. So what you'll have is this mesh of collagen proteins. So I'll just draw a typical mesh of collagen proteins, and I'll colour these collagen proteins in blue. Okay, now in amongst this mess, you'll also have some fibres which aren't protein fibres, but instead are sugar fibres. So collagen is an example of a protein fibre, so what we've drawn so far, which is mainly collagen 6, if you're interested in the details. Um, but there are many different forms of collagen. We can just know it as collagen. Right, so in amongst the collagen fibres, you will also have a sugar fibres. You also have some sugar fibres in this meshwork, okay? So I'll colour these sugar fibres in green. And specifically, one of the sugar fibres that we are going to be interested in is a sugar fibre known as heparin sulfate proteoglycan. Heparin sulfate. Now, in fact, you can just stop, if you wish, at calling it heparin sulfate. The sugar fibre, if you just have a pure sugar fibre, it will be just heparin sulfate. So what does the word proteoglycan mean? Well, proteoglycan means that this fiber is a sugar fiber because the glycan at the end means that it's sugar fiber, but proteo at the front means that it's attached to proteins. So which proteins would be attached to? Well, maybe it might be attached to some of the collagen fibers. In addition, heparin sulfate will bind to proteins that are in the presynaptic membrane as well as the postsynaptic membrane. So it will bind to proteins in the sarcolemma and also in the presynaptic membrane. Right, and in this way it's holding these two membranes opposed to one another. So heparin sulfate proteoglycan is very important for the structure of the synaptic cleft. Okay, now it is to the heparin sulfate proteoglycans, which these acetylcholinesterase complexes are going to bind. So you're going to have these things bound to heparin sulfate proteoglycan um, fibers 
uh, within the basement membrane of the synaptic cleft or the neuromuscular junction, strictly speaking. So let's just draw a miniature one of these out here. So here is our cold Q tails attached at this end down here to the uh, proteoglycan, to the heparin sulfate proteoglycan. And then off at the head, what you've then got is these acetylcholinesterase enzymes, these tetramers of acetylcholinesterase enzymes coming off. So basically, in the basement membrane, you have these acetylcholinesterase enzymes attached to fibres within that basement membrane. So they are not just floating around in an empty void, which is the synaptic cleft. Instead, they are bound to these fibres which are spanning between both cells and are making up this extracellular structure of the synapse. Okay, right. So, what will now happen then is when acetylcholine is released from the presynaptic neuron, the acetylcholine will still diffuse across the synaptic cleft. Yes, we now appreciate that it has to dodge through these fibres, but it will still get from the presynaptic neuron to the uh, membrane of the cell, to the sarcomema. Okay? It will then activate the uh, nicotinic acetylcholine receptors, the alpha-1, 2, beta-1, delta, epsilon, nicotinic acetylcholine receptors, and then it will be broken down by the acetylcholinesterases in the um, in this um, synaptic cleft. Okay, so these are what terminate the signal. So they are going to break down the acetylcholine and make sure that it doesn't remain there, stimulating the um, nicotinic acetylcholine receptors on the sarcolemma forever, basically. So what we're now going to do is actually turn our attention to the mechanism by which these uh, acetylcholinesterase enzymes break down acetylcholine. And they do this reaction at a very fast rate. So each one of these enzymes here is capable of breaking down 10,000 acetylcholinesterase, mo uh, sorry, acetylcholine molecules per second. Okay, so we're now going to look at the mechanism by which they do this. And the mechanism is actually quite important because a number of the acetylcholinesterase enzymes are going to act on the key players of the active site which are involved with the mechanism. So, what we'll do is we'll study the mechanism, we'll then have a talk about myasthenia gravis, and we'll then look at the actual inhibitors and how they stop the enzyme from functioning. But we'll move on to that mechanism in the next video.